Good evening. This is August 16th, 2018. It's a meeting of the Northampton City Council. My name is Ryan O'Donnell. I'm the council president. I'll be presiding tonight. Let me note the audio and video recording of these proceedings, and we'll begin, as we always do, with public comment. This is an opportunity for the public to speak on any issue you wish. We only keep ask you two things. Keep it to three minutes or less, and remember that we can't engage in a back and forth with you. This is your time to give your opinion to us. The reason for these rules is just to make sure everyone is heard fairly and receives equal time. So I'll begin with my sign-up sheet, and after that, anyone who hasn't signed up will be free to come and um, also give public comment. If I mispronounce your name. Uh, the first person is Jude, Judy yes. Sidney. Yes. And if, so the podium is yours if you give your name and address for the record, please. Thank you. Um, Jude Sidney, S-I-D-N-E-Y, McDonald House, 49 Old South Street. I'm just approaching to thank Mary Ann for helping us with our air conditioner problems and hoping that she'll hang in with us for the mold problem. And that's all I wanted to say. We're kind of battling with Northampton housing, and you were wonderful. Far more relaxed than I was. Thank you. Thank you very much for those, those comments. Um, City Clerk, Pamela Powers. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm Pam Powers. I'm the City Clerk here in Northampton, and I reside at 105 North Main Street in Florence. I'm here tonight to remind everyone that Tuesday, September 4th is voting day in Northampton and the entire state. I want to update everyone with a few pieces of information so that everyone is prepared for the day. Everyone is entitled to a ballot on primary day, no matter what your party affiliation is. So registered Democrats, Republicans, and Libertarians will only be offered their party's ballot. All unenrolled, also known as independent voters, will be offered their choice of one of three ballots, the ones I mentioned previously. Uh, members of any other registered party will also have their choice of ballot on the primary day, and they'll be able to cast whichever ballot they'd like. Everyone is entitled to bring information into the voting booth with them to help them to cast their ballot for the candidate of their choosing. And this year, uh, starting with the primary, we have new scanning and tabulating equipment that was authorized by the city council earlier this year. Information about the equipment is available on the city clerk's website, including a short tutorial about how to cast your ballot that was provided by the vendor for the new voting equipment. Voting security is of the utmost importance, and I want to ensure voters that the equipment is not tied to the internet in any way. <coughs> Massachusetts communities are prohibited by law to capture an image of the cast ballots, so your ballots are scanned for tabulating and sorting only, and no image of it is retained. If you'll be out of the city on the day of the election, please consider voting absentee. You can stop by the city clerk's office to vote there or have your ballot mailed to you. And I want to wish all the candidates the best of luck on voting day, and I hope to see you all at the polls. Thank you very much. Um, next we have <coughs> Mark. Um, your last name's illegible, so I'll let, you, I'll let you say it. Okay. Floor is yours. I'm Mark Chesbro. I live at 87 Federal Street in, in Northampton here. And I'm, the only reason why I'm here is I got a real concern about our animal control officer not doing her job. I was bit by a dog. <coughs> she would not even return Coley Dick's call to find out if the dog was vaccinated or not. This has been going on for three years. She has not done her job. People are getting hurt. People are getting maimed and dogs are getting destroyed. And there's absolutely nothing being done. She will not return calls or nothing. And I am just asking and appealing before a tragedy happens for something to be done about it. I had to go to court because I defended me and my dog and I was told I would have been better off not hitting the owner, but killing the dog. And is this right? I just want to know 
what I got to do to defend me and my dog. It's out of control. People are coming from different towns even with bad dogs. And you know as well as I do, something will happen to a child like it has before, and then all hell breaks loose. You got to muzzle your dog. You can't have your dog downtown. <coughs> and, and I just don't know why she refuses to do her job. And it's very frustrating when people are coming to me asking me what can they do. And there's no effective dog officer in this town. She'd rather chase chickens than eagles and do nothing for the community which she is supposed to be taken care of. And it's going to get to the point where one of these times, somebody's got a child or an adult is going to be maimed or killed. And there's just, it's out of control. And that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you for hearing me. Yeah, thank you for those comments. And a uh, reminder to anyone who brings a specific issue to the city council, although we can't exchange in back and forth, you can follow up with your city councilors uh, separately after the meeting. Um, the next person is David Dombrowski, please. Uh, my name is Barry Roth. Uh, David was unable to make it, and he asked me if I would read his statement. So I have offered to do that. Uh, I then will speak for myself. Um, essentially, uh, David's statement uh, concerns the housing development on Emerson Way. Uh, there was a planning board hearing made and some decisions made, which he feels he wasn't notified about. He specifically says, I had received a postcard in the mail about a hearing. The postcard had minimal information and it was confusing as to the subject. So I did not attend the Northampton public hearing dated July 26, 2018 at 7.13 p.m., which was held at Council Chambers Municipal Building. Uh, ultimately, it's the city's, city's residents who should have the final say in what should and should not be allowed in our neighborhoods. And I'm hoping that they can zero in. Uh, I think Jen said she could zero in. This was all that was sent in the mail. This little statement over here, 730 p.m. subdivision am amendment by Emerson Way to allocate six previously identified affordable units to another site at Emerson Way, Florence. That's what the announcement said. This is against the law. You have to give proper indication of what the meeting was about. The meeting was about moving the documents out of Emerson Way to a completely different location, one which happens to abut my property. Um, you know, I think, I think having made that statement, uh, I'll carry on with my statement. I believe I'm the next speak speaker, so if you, if you like. I'm here to speak about the planning board hearing which allowed Emerson Way to move the affordable units, housing units they committed to building on their property to Bird's Pit Road instead. This project was begun in 2002, and there were lots of, pro lots of problems, so the city struck a deal with them. Over the objections of neighbors who were concerned about it, its impact and the loss of the beautiful rural area, rural nature of the area, it was agreed that in exchange for being allowed to build this complex, they would build 11% affordable housing units. This was a fixed and agreement. 15 years later, <coughs> under new ownership, when they actually have to build the units, Emerson Way said, well, we don't really want to build the units. We really don't want to follow through on that. We've decided what we'll do is we'll build them somewhere else. And they went to the Northampton Planning Board to request that change. And unbelievably, the Northampton Planning Board gave them that change, and all the people who abut Bird's Pit Road, and all the people who abut Emerson Way were given no notification about that's what the meeting was. This is against the law. We will appeal to Superior Court. We don't want to go that route. But if you cannot influence the planning board to open up the hearing again so everybody can be heard, then we, that is what we will do. And we want each and every one of you to sign on to that appeal. At that hearing, it was, ar it was argued that the affordable housing owners would feel out of place living next to such expensive homes on Emerson Way. 
However, the new plan concentrates the owners all together, thereby segregating them and stigmatizing them. And as a result, it will also have an impact on neighboring homes and their values. This amounts to spot zoning, creating zones that for different, not for mixed income, but for specific incomes. Remarkably, no valid justification for this has been given. <coughs> According to the, the State Ethics Commission, state employees must, aren't supposed to accept $50 because it could inf influence them. I will point out that this particular builder gave $250 to Ma Mayor Narkowitz's campaign only months before this came up before the planning board. He also offered in the sum of several hundred thousand dollars to Habitat Humanity if it be allowed to, to be built. You, the city councils, must object, are obligated to object to this procedure. The lack of ob obligatory clear notification about the hearing, the fact that the developer waited 15 years and didn't keep their honor to build all these units, because it deliberately segregates people on income into concentrated areas against city's planning guides, the lack of, of, of the lack of justification for pro promoting this, the redefining of what an agreement means, all of these things come into play. They are absolutely outrageous. None of you should allow this. We love our community. We love the rural character of our neighborhood. When we feel threatened by overdevelopment, we like that our neighborhood presents presently as mixed income, and we want to keep it that way. Ryan, you are running Mr. the state office. I think it's up to you if you want to go and clean up the, st the state of Massachusetts, then it, it's imperative for you to show that you can do it by starting cleaning up what's going on in our town. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you for those comments. Okay. Um, next is uh, Blair Jimma, please. wanted to briefly support um, the order to strengthen uh, democracy in our housing units. Thank you very much. Um, Tom Burton. Uh, Tom Burton, 81 Conn Street. I also want to, uh, well, first of all, I want to thank Mary Ann and Jim for showing up at the housing meeting we had last week, just last week. And uh, also I want to thank you for promoting this, this democratization of the housing authority authority because it really the way it's working now it's not working and it's it's at this point it's actually reached the level of possibly being dangerous and uh, um, dangerous to the health and the welfare and the well-being of the people who who live in these houses over here my place over on Con Street in particular but not limited to those places so this would be a way of getting us the community more involved I would hope but anyway, uh, Ryan, thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Uh, Elizabeth Humphrey, please. Oh, you're ready to go. Yep. Right. <laughs> uh, really, I just am um, <coughs> here to briefly support the order for democratizing the um, and, and continuing the uh, actually making the Board um, of Housing a votable elected board. Excuse me. I <laughs> screwing up here but that's really all I wanted to say is I support that order thank you <laughs> thank, thank you for those comments as well is there anyone else who has not signed up but would like to give public comment at this time <clears throat> sure Eric please yep. uh, in brief, uh, I believe it's excuse me uh, Dan Mr. O'Connell I believe it's been mentioned uh, the Arizona iced tea is not recyclable in Massachusetts yet I'm not really sure why because it is, it is recyclable in uh, in Maine and, and Hawaii, these five cent cans. So I did Google them or send them a note and they said that we do not require to recycle iced tea. The glass is recyclable, maybe goes to the dumpster, 66 is crushed. These are adding up by the thousands, I believe every day and five cents deposits, people can subsidize their rent. So um, maybe there's something we can do about that. I don't know if it has to be legislated. Arizona iced tea. Um, we'll see. I'll, I'll Google them again. Maybe simply we could keep it on the agenda. These add up, go to landfill. I reckon about a thousands a day. So, and that's probably thousands, a hundred in cash for people's rent. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate appreciate those comments. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who'd like to give public comment who did not sign up? But feel free to step forward. 
Uh, if not, we'll convene and I'll ask for a roll call. City Council, please. Here. Present. Here. Present. Okay, so we have a quorum and we are in session. I have no updates, but are there any one minute announcements from members of the city council? None? Oh my gosh. It's the doldrums of summer. All right. Uh, uh, Your Honor, do you have any communications? Mr. Mayor, do you have any communications? No? Okay. Uh, the resolutions, this is 18.097, a resolution to lower the voting age for Northampton municipal election, elections, second reading. I assume we want to waive reading. Wait, we, yes. uh, is there a motion to approve this resolution? Yes. Second. Motion. Made and, and seconded by Councillor Klein. Any discussion on second reading? Not ask for a roll call. Okay. Um, Councillor Bidwell? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor Dwight? Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor Donald? Yes. Councillor Sheriff? Yes. Okay. Resolutions approved unanimously on second reading. Uh, we'll go to the consent agenda next. I'll read the items on the consent agenda. And at the request of any one counselor, an item may be removed for individual discussion. Otherwise, there is no discussion about the items on the consent agenda, which contains, first, the minutes of July 12, 2018. Uh, second, the applications for taxi cab licenses, uh, five in quantity, for Jeffrey Miller of Cosmic Cab Company. I'd like to discuss that separately. So that will be removed separately. Uh, the next is application for a business owner's permit for uh, Jeff Miller of Cosmic Cab. Same request? Same request. Okay. So those two are removed. Uh, an application for a secondhand dealer license for the vintage seller. Um, and then appointments to um, various boards, which are usually listed right up front, but are not. So I'd like to read them for the record, if I might, so please bear with me while I locate them. Um, and for everyone playing along at home, the internet connection has gone out, which we usually rely on. You know, this is a sign of modern life. We rely too much on uh, Google to answer all of our questions. Brian, do you want mine? Have it here. Thank you, Counselor. All right, so we have, um, and th these will be the equivalent to referrals. Uh, referrals. Yes to the Committee on City Services, which will review them. So to the Agricultural Commission is uh, John Omasta of 165 West Farms Road, Florence, from a term July 2018 to June 2021. Earl Chip M. Parsons of 137 Mill Valley Road. This, uh, this is actually in Hadley, uh, but farms are actually located in Northampton. The term will be July 2018 to June 2021. To the Arts Council, uh, Kevin Pomerlo of 63 Ravel, Avenue Northampton for a term September 2018 to June 2021. This is to fill the vacancy after Jan Ruby's term expired in 2018. To the Central Business Architecture Committee, Joseph Blumenthal of, of 39 Chapel Street, Northampton, July 2018 to June 2021. To the Disability Commission, Linda L. Kakos of 220 uh, Rocky Hill Road in Florence for, uh, from September 2018 to June 2021. Uh, this is to fill the vacancy after Gayton uh, Fortin's term expired in, Ju in uh, 2018. To Northampton Housing Authority Board of Commission Commissioners, Emily Laufer of 241 Jackson Street, Apartment 10B, Northampton. Uh, and then to the Zoning Board of Appeals, David C. Bloomberg of, of 86 Vernon Street, Northampton, July 2018 to June 2021. Uh, any removals there? Hearing none. That is it for the consent agenda. So do I hear a motion to approve it? Move approval. Move approval. Second. 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 Except for those except, except for the two that we removed. Thank you very much. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda with an, uh, uh, exceptions, please say aye. 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 Opposed, any abstentions? The consent agenda is approved. <coughs> so now we're going to go in the order in which they were removed to the ones that were removed. And the first is 18.087 <coughs> applications for taxi cab licenses, five for Jeffrey Miller. Um, is there a motion to grant these applications to get them on the floor? So moved. Made Second. by Councilor Bidwell, seconded by Councilor Nash. Um, discussion on this? Uh, I'll give you an update. Uh, as you recall, uh, the Council um, on two occasions granted an extension 
uh, for these taxi cab licenses because one of the places of businesses where Cosmic Cab was out of conformance uh, with the, the laws of uh, the city of Northampton. Uh, its owner then went to the Zoning Board of Appeals um, to uh, seek a temporary permit to operate at this location. And the location in question was Hooker Avenue. Um, it's my understanding that the ZBA has indeed granted the temporary permit, and so the taxi company is in compliance with the law, and if it wished to, the council could, in fact, grant these taxi licenses lawfully. That's my understanding of the situation, but I will ask Councilor Nash if he wishes to add to something, because he was the one who suggested they be removed from the Yeah, I actually had some questions. Um, so there's a long list of uh, things that uh, Cosmic will be asked to adhere to adhere to during the duration of this permit. And uh, my question is, you know, uh, let's say, uh, you know, there shall be no on-street employee or cab parking. I mean, it, will this be revoked if that is discovered? Um, or does it mean that next time around we aren't, aren't going to reapprove this permit? So that's my question. My, my interpretation of my, my, what I think the answer is, I think the city council by city ordinance is the licensing authority. And so I interpret that we have the ability to give licenses and also remove them if necessary. I suppose people so could argue that point, but that's what I think. So it would come back to us. I think someone would have to initiate a repeal. Um, I can't be entirely certain, to be, to be honest. I haven't researched how someone would repeal a license. But as you know, this would go, I believe, until the month of May, if I'm not mistaken. The Is permit it May? goes until May 1st. April 30th. April, April 30th, 30th or May 1st. So, ZBA's um, so at that time, we'll be coming back to revisit a new license anyway. So that's the information I can provide. Okay. Yeah. Councilor Labarge? Yes, um, I attended that zoning board meeting because I had another meeting that pertained to Ward 6. And it was a lengthy meeting. <laughs> And even the owner who was there, naturally, um, understood what the intense conditions were. So I think he understands that. I also feel that the zoning board did what exactly where the consular had great concerns about the no parking on the street and so forth like that. So I was very pleased to hear of the conditions that were placed in around that site. And I, I would say if he does not abide by that, there would be a big problem. I think they could revoke that license. And I'll, I'll just read the conditions into the record for those who are interested. The conditions that the, the ZBA uh, stipulated was that the permit will expire, as someone said, on April 30th. Um, no more than five cabs shall operate at the site. No more than three cabs shall be started overnight, stored overnight. Off-street parking shall be at least five feet from the street. And no more than two vehicles shall be in the 10-foot front setback. There shall be no on-street employee or cab parking, which I think that was a major concern of the residents. Uh, there shall be no idling of employer, uh, excuse me, of employee or cab vehicles. Vehicles shall not be parked so as to block private residential driveways. That's nice, isn't it? Yep. Um, and, uh, Vehicle turnaround should be done using the site driveway. No car maintenance is allowed between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. Um, all unregistered vehicles related to the cab operation shall be uh, removed by September 1st. So those are the things. Um, Councilor, did you have other questions to raise? Um, I, I just wanted to say I had a lengthy meeting with one of the, the residents and uh, one of the things he spoke to, and I think it, it, it is addressed here, and there's a lot of rules here, um, that, uh, that there's turnover with the shifts. And that is where, so, you know, you have five cabs here, you have five cars showing up, people getting out of the cars, the cabs pull in, you got five drivers getting out to go get in their cars. So you're talking 15 cars, possibly, um, turning over. And the, the issue that, um, this uh, resident mentioned uh, the biggest problem was the turnover in the middle of the night shifts. That there was there would be a lot of noise on the street. There would be cars revving and idling, and um, which is a little unusual for uh, you know when you have a residential street. 
uh, to have that kind of activity going on. Um, so, but I, I think I'm, I'm fine with moving forward on this with all of these restrictions. Okay. Any other comments from the council? No. Well, the motion on the floor is to approve the, the application. Um, so, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. <coughs> Any abstentions? So, those applications are granted unanimously. The other thing that we had not been able to do was actually grant an application for a business owner's permit, uh, for which I would ask um, a motion now to grant the permit so we can discuss it. So Move to approve. Second. Okay. Uh, made by Councillor Bidwell and seconded by Councillor Klein. Um, is there any discussion on granting a business permit so this business can operate? I think all the issues were related to the ones we discussed, but Councillor yeah, it, 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 you can kind of see it here. So we, we just approved, you know, f uh, cabs to be operating uh, out of one street, and the the address of this business is at another place. Um, so um, that and and this is I, I'm just pointing the, this out. It's the difficulty of um, one of one of the difficulties as we wrangle with our taxi cabs licensing that um, you know that the business can exist practically in virtual space but the actual impact of the company can be on a residential street um, that's all I wanted to say I think uh, the counselor makes a good point that's one of the reasons why we amended our ordinance to apply to all locations in which a company does business in the city so it can't just be in an offshore tropical island or something like that. It has to be all the businesses where it actually counts. Um, is there any other discussion on granting the business permit? Um, all those in favor of granting the permit, please say aye. 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 Any abstentions? So that is granted unanimously as well. Um, excellent. So we done with the consent agenda. We come to 18.139, a warrant for the 2018 state primary election. Uh, Two readings are requested since the state primary election is soon. Um, and I will read this into the record. Um, this is upon the recommendation of City Clerk Pamela L. Powers, 018.139, warrant for the 2018 state primary election, ordered that meetings of the members of the Democratic, Republican, and Libertarian parties qualified to vote in the city of Northampton will be held on Tuesday, the fourth day of September 2018, in several polling places designated for this purpose by the City Council as follows. Ward 1, Precinct A, in Jackson Street School Auditorium, same for, same for Precinct B. Ward 2, Precinct A, in Smith Vocational Agricultural High School, the same for Precinct B. Ward 3, Precincts, uh, let's see, Ward 3A and Ward 3B, Ward 4A and Ward 4B are all in the Senior Center, the Great Room, 67 Conn Street. Uh, Ward 5, Precinct A, in the Florence Civic and Business Building, 90 Park Street. Ward 5, Precinct B in Smith Vocational Agricultural High School. Ward 6, Precincts A and B in the Robert K. Finn Ryan Road School. Ward 7, Precinct A in the John F. Kennedy Middle School Community Room. And Ward 7, Precinct B in Leeds School Gymnasium Lower Level. The polls will be opened at 7 o'clock in, in the forenoon and closed at 8 o'clock in the evening of that said day. And all such members will in the several wards and precincts in which they are individually entitled to vote between said hours, give in their votes for uh, the nomination of candidates for uh, Senator and Congress for the Commonwealth, Governor uh, for this Commonwealth, uh, Lieutenant Governor for this Commonwealth, Attorney General, Secretary of State, Treasurer and Receiver General, Auditor, Representative in Congress for the Second District, Counselor for the Eighth District, Senator in General Court, New Hampshire, Franklin, and Worcester District. Representative in General Court, 1st Hampshire District, District Attorney, Northwestern District, Clerk of Courts, Hampshire County, Register of Deeds, uh, the Hampshire District. <coughs> so motion to approve that order. Make a motion. Second. Okay, made and second. Any discussion on approving the order? Council Bidwell. I, I just had a couple of questions. I wonder if we could recognize our, our, our city Certainly. clerk for a couple of questions since she was kind enough to stick around. Vote for that. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure you've been asked this uh, many times, but could you update us on how the how the new technology, the new equipment that you've referred to, will will, will handle stickers? Because we anticipate uh, in the in the state senate uh, race in particular there being a number of sticker candidates. Yes, votes. that's what we hear. 
Um, we are asking the candidates to provide stickers to the city clerk's office so that during testing of the equipment, we'll have the opportunity to see how those stickers <coughs> function in the machines. Um, the, the plan is that, that the candidates will provide stickers that, uh, at least that's my plan, and I hope that's their plan, stickers that will uh, fit in the space that's allotted for the write-in candidate. Um, there are ballots that are available that I can provide as samples so that people will have that, um, you know, that dimension. Um, the, when a candidate or um, a voter places their sticker on the ballot, uh, the, requi the state requires that you also color in the associated oval with that. However, <clears throat> um, we also rely uh, or we also um, impose voter intent procedures when we count the ballot. At the end of the evening, every single ballot needs to be physically looked at to make sure that if there isn't an oval that hasn't been filled in, that even though the there is a write-in candidate, for example, that write-in candidate's vote will still count. So in addition to the technology recognizing that, um, that uh, write-in uh, circle being colored in, we also have the human piece of it where we will be looking at every single ballot. Does that address your question? It does. That's, that's, okay. that's, that's very helpful. Is that it? Any other questions for City Clerk Powers? Just one quick follow-up. When do you anticipate uh, sample ballots might be? The specimen ballots are in. Oh, they are? Uh, yep. They're their um, color, the specimen ballots are color coded. In addition to that, a couple weeks ago, I had made my own sample ballots with uh, the absentee ballots that we had received, and those are already on the city clerk's website as well. When you go to the city clerk's page, if you click on elections, you'll see all the information um, that's pertinent to the September 4th primary. So Any other they're questions? there, and you can. Sample ones in the office. As always, we appreciate your diligence and professionalism. Thank you very much. Um, any other discussion on the warrant, uh, the order for the warrant? We have it on the floor. Um, I'll ask for a roll call on this. Okay. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Schiller. Suspend the roll. And Councilor Bissell, I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Please. <Thank you. laughs> okay. Chance. Pass on first reading. Council of the Barge makes a motion to suspend rules to allow for a second reading. Is there a second on the motion to suspend rules? Yes. Uh, second. Any, any discussion on it? All those in favor of spending rules, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Rules to suspend. Is there a motion to approve in second reading? Move to approve in second reading. Very good. Is there a second? second. Very good. We're moving right along. <laughs> any discussion on second reading? of the warrant for the election. So we can have democracy happen in, in North Camp. Not as for roll call again. Okay. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor LaBarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. <coughs> Councillor Carney. Yes. Okay. Okay. The order is approved in second reading. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now recess for the Committee on Finance, Star Councillor David Murphy. Hey, Laura, would you read the roll for finance, please? Sure. <coughs> Councillor Murphy. Here. Councillor Carney. Present. Councillor Barge. Yes. Councillor Shara. So uh, first order of business tonight is to approve some minutes. We have minutes from July 12th. We have minutes from July 24th, and we have minutes from March 27th tonight. To approve. Approve. Second. Second. Any discussion on the minutes? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. And now we have our fourth quarter 18 uh, financial report. And Susan Wright, the finance director, is here to bring us up to date on how, how 18 ended up. Um, this is not a completely final uh, fourth quarter report. The auditor is still working on closing out the books, and there's still some revenues that are uh, planned to come in um, 
waiting for some grant reimbursements, et cetera. But in general, I'll start with the general fund, uh, the revenues for the general fund. Some of the highlights are uh, hotel, motel, and meals tax rec receivables. Uh, for 2018, hotel, motel uh, revenue from the hotel, motel tax was up $42,000, or 6%, over the previous year. And revenue from the meals tax was up $37,000 over last year, or 5%. So the two of those together are, you know, good, healthy economic indicators. Um, in terms of parking, um, we also had um, some good news there. The parking receipts, just the, the parking receipts, not parking tickets, parking receipts, um, came in exactly as it did before. And the reason I say that that's good is that we implemented the new uh, kiosk system in July last year. And so there were you know, times in July and August where the system was still being implemented. And so uh, revenues were a little off for July and August. But it was a result of our new system, which is working quite well. So the fact that revenues were were the same as the previous year tells me that <coughs> had we been fully up and running in July and August, they would have been higher. So, so in terms of the revenues for the general fund, if you look at the statement that you have, um, another highlight that I'd like to point out is on the third page, our uh, detail about permit revenue and the building department, um, which would include building inspections, plumbing, wiring, weights and measures, periodic inspections, and sidewalk um, signage inspections. There was an increase of 15% in permit fees over the prior year. Uh, we brought in $119,000 more collectively in permit fees than the previous year. So that bodes well for the new growth number that we'll be getting from the assessors in a couple of months, which will help drive the uh, finalizing the 2019 budget. Um, so there's really uh, nothing else to point out. Um, there are no revenues that I was concerned about that came in, you know, anywhere lower than I thought that they would. Um, so we're looking at a pretty healthy number in terms of revenues exceeding our estimates. Um, in terms of the expenditures in the general fund, if you look at that report, um, you'll see that the total that was turned back between all of the city departments, and I'm not including the schools here, um, but all the city departments, the turn back at the end of the year was $2.2 million. Now, last year, the turn back from city departments was $1.98. So we're about $300,000 more in turn backs um, over last year. So again, that will bode well for when we go to get uh, free cash certified. So the turn backs are a result of departments not fully expending their entire budget. Um, we had vacancies in some departments, which certainly is where the um, surplus salary came from. And then other departments, you know, things may not have cost as much. Um, there's turn backs um, all, you know, throughout that. And then there's also turn backs in health insurance, and that's primarily a result of all the vacancies. So by having vacancies, you then are not spending money on health insurance. So um, so the two numbers, the re revenue that came in over our estimates and the money that was turned back, which means we spent less than we thought, those two numbers together are what feed our free cash. And so it looks like we're going to be you know, fairly in line with where we were last year. In terms of the enterprise funds, um, all four of them um, brought in 100% or more of the revenue that they were anticipated. Uh, sewer Enterprise Fund came in about $100,000 in revenue more than the prior year. Water Enterprise um, came in slightly lower than the prior year, but still uh, just above our estimates. I think part of that would be attributed to uh, some of the water bans that we had last summer. Uh, stormwater and solid waste, pretty much the same as the prior year. No big surprises there. And then in terms of their turnbacks, um, everything is pretty much following the same track as it did last year. So in general, I think the budget, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty much as we expected. And every report I've given you quarterly has pretty much said everything's on track. So no big surprises, but I am happy to see that parking, meals, and permits, which all are kind of 
economic right. indicators for the city, things that can go up and down as the economy changes. All of those are looking very positive. And our collection rate was excellent. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Susan? No. Nope. Councilor. There are just a few places in the revenues that I wanted to ask about where they came in um, quite a bit lower than what was estimated. So just wanted to hear a little bit about that, like um, garage fees are at 70%, um, parking garage revenue. So I'm just wondering if we have any sense of what that's about. Okay. So what? What um, is happening with the parking? If you look at, up until last year, we had five categories. We had parking revenues, which let me tell you, parking, that first line, parking revenues is 442010. That is strictly meter revenue from on-street parking. Um, parking lot revenue is the meet, is the revenue from the lots. Parking garage is the garage. Parking passes is the passes that people buy. Um, then we had the PD parking garage. In July, we implemented the kiosks, and the money coming in from the kiosks that was on credit cards is now being lumped into one line item. So before that money would have gone into the parking revenue, the first two lines, now it's all in another line. So if you look, I didn't even have anything budgeted for parking kiosk credit card or the mobile app. Remember, we also went to Park Mobile. I didn't budget for those because they were brand new. So I knew we'd bring in about the same amount of revenue, but I didn't distribute it. So it, in, in the 2019 budget, when we set the tax rate, I will redistribute it and I will be putting in a projected budget for the Park Mobile app and the kiosks, and then I'll be lowering those other um, line items. So the total will still be the same. The total will be about 1.8 million in parking revenues. And I will point out that um, every year we estimate how much we're gonna bring in in parking, um, and anything that's over that estimate um, goes into the receipt reserve for parking. So this year at the end, of the year, um, we were able to, we actually brought in $2 million in parking revenue, but 200,000 of that was moved to, was over and above our estimate, so that was moved to the receipt reserve for parking. And that's where we get the money to do the pay kiosks, to make repairs to the garage, et cetera. So, so that's, that's uh, I'm glad you brought that up because it will f fix itself in 2019. I just didn't budget anything for those because we had no idea how much we were going to get in credit card revenue. We didn't know how many people were going to use Park Mobile. I was just wondering if one of the lots had been closed or yeah, just no, it's just it's just because of the way the numbers are put in for the budget line. But. And then there are two departments that I'm charged for services that came in low. One is in the treasurer's office I think it is and the other one is in the police department is it 75 percent of projected uh, which is that which page is that on page two is it in the department revenue charges yes. for services yes. okay so police department yeah that one is the police department revenue is money they get from fines that are paid to the state that it becomes our share like our share of a, a, a say a speeding ticket that you know, whatever. Um, so those can go up and down. Um, so I don't, I can find out from the chief though why it was, and what I need to do is look at what it was last year. It may, it probably was in the $65,000 range last year. So why it's 15 lower, I will ask the chief. And then the other one you asked about was the treasurer. Right, that's a small amount of money though. It's $250, but I was just curious about. Yeah, I'm not, I'd have to look. That's a real small miscellaneous line item, so I'm not really sure what goes into that. Um, but I can check on that too. Thank you. Any other questions for uh, Susan on the 18 budget? Hearing none, thank you. Thank you, Susan. So uh, the next item um, is 18141, an order to award a contract for the FY19 audit to Scanlon Associates. The charter requires us by uh, the 15th of September to appoint an auditor for 19, the fiscal year we're in now that won't end until the end of June. So uh, finance actually met um, 
that was the meeting that we did on the 24th with regards to that to try and make the deadline. Um, Scanlon Associates, who's doing our audit this year, has agreed to maintain the same price in 18 uh, for 19 as they did in 18. Um, so the uh, recommendation from the Finance Committee, I think, will be that we go ahead with that. So the order is, whereas Section 7.6 of the Northampton City Charter requires the City Council to annually award a contract for an outside audit of the books and accounts of the City to be conducted by a certified public accountant or by a firm of certified public accountants, which has no personal interest direct or indirect in the fiscal affairs of the City or any of its officers. Uh, so therefore, be ordered that the City Council hereby awards the contract for auditing services for FY19 to Scanlon Associates LLC at prices and rates quoted in the company's FY 2019 letter of engagement, uh, essentially the same as they were for 18. Um, do we have a motion in finance? Make a motion. Second. Second. Any, any discussion on this? Okay. Um, Councilor Nash? Yeah. Uh, I'm just curious because I think it was Mr. Scanlon who actually made this suggestion at one point it, that with auditors, you know, it, it's, it's good to have an auditor who comes in many years in a row, but at a certain point, mm -hmm. it's good to bring in somebody else. And during my time on council, uh, Scanlon and associates have been doing the work and I'm mm -hmm. wondering mm -hmm. if finance has thought about when that turnover might we, be. We, we actually did discuss that. Um, part of our problem was that um, this, this came up in July with a September 15th deadline. Um, what we're going to propose to do, because Scanlon is just finishing a three-year contract, so that was negotiated, I think, before you were here. Right. A, a, the 18 audit is the last year of that three-year contract. What we're going to do, because with such a short time frame, we really didn't have the opportunity to solicit um, bids from other auditors and then review them and be able to make an, a recommendation for another company. The other problem is that it, it's the middle of vacation season and the auditors, in addition to that, are, are diving into, it's the end of 18, so they're all busy. Scanlon Associates would have had uh, kind of an advantage because they know the city. So if we would had five or six bids, their pencil would have been the sharpest because they know the most about us. Right. The other people wouldn't have much of a chance to study Northampton and actually have bid competitively with the short time frame. So what finance talked about doing was perhaps beginning in March for the 20 audit and submit applications like we did three years ago. Really, the, it was more the fact that we had that deadline and we could maintain the cost with scan and they agreed to do it for one more year. Uh, but I think in, in March or April of 19, we will get together and submit uh, request for proposals and entertain uh, some interviews with some other auditors to see if, in fact, we should make a change. Does that pretty much sum up our discussion for people on finance? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and just to be clear, in a technical note, what you're actually doing is taking the order as mm -hmm. included in the agenda, and you read language that you essentially wish to replace it with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you're so voting on that constitutes an, an amendment of the mm -hmm. order. Yeah, the way so originally, um, it was going to just award it to them, um, but we changed. We wanted to recommend it. Do you have your original order, eighteen one four one? Do we have that in front? Of you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, we omitted the, the second whereas because um, it, it really doesn't make any difference. It relates to federal funds, uh, and then we changed the now therefore of it. Uh, to, 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 because we wanted to refer to the letter of engagement rather than um, an agreed upon contract price, rather than contract price, we wanted to refer to the letter of engagement. So we probably should offer that as an amendment. Are we all can we comfortable with that? Somebody want to propose that amendment? To switch, to switch it from that the City Council hereby awards a contract for auditing services for FY19 to Scanlon and Associates LLC at the same price as agreed upon in 18, We'd like to change the language to that the City Council hereby awards a contract for auditing services for FY19 to Scanlon Associates at the prices and rates quoted in the company's FY19 engagement letter. So rather than just uh, agreed upon, refer to the engagement letter that they submitted, which has all the prices in it. So moved. Second. Up. Second. All right. Any discussion on that? Any questions from yes, Councillor? Um, 
They're just trying to tie the number of 66,400 to the numbers in the contract. Um, I, I'm assuming that 66,400 is a, a not to exceed, effectively. If, if, okay. if they didn't require billing um, eight or nine days at $700 a day, which is the discretionary part of the contract, they would actually wind up billing for something less than that, right? So it's effectively a not to exceed. It's a cap, no more than that. And the thing that's a little confusing is there's, they, they audit the city books, which is, which is us, and I think that's about $49,000. It goes up because they also audit the school, mm -hmm. and the school department, uh, the school committee is kind of in charge in that. Mm -hmm. So our portion of the audit is $49,000, but the difference between that and, and the $60,000 figure is the portion of the audit that is done, by, done for the school committee. And it just, it, even if you add what they charge for the school committee and for the retirement plan, mm -hmm. it still gets you up to 58000 which is, so that, that remainder is those daily charges that on a discretionary basis they might be charging. I'll, I'll I, I'm just making the point perhaps it's unnecessary that it's, we're not really authorizing a flat 664. we're yeah. authorizing up to that should it be necessary. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well. And in fact, we're striking that whole reference to the 66. Mm -hmm. And we're in, place of that, yeah. in place of that, it would just say, the City Council hereby awards the contract for auditing services for the fiscal year 19 State scandal State. associates at the prices and rates quoted in the company's letter of engagement, which, as the Council for More 2 points out, includes partly a per diem rate, partly a flat rate. I think there's a total of like five or so different components of the <coughs> much cleaner way to do it that way we're not uh, yeah. doing too much or too little mm -hmm. it's funny because in the past I don't think we did this with an order at all we just kind of had a motion to uh, grant a contract to an auditor but we kind of want to maybe be, be a little more specific <coughs> this time so we have a letter of engagement which is very specific and we're referring to that Councilor LaVarge yes um, on the memorandum for um, 2019 independent audit if you look at what mr. Scanlon is stating that he has verbally agreed to hold the same price as for the 2018 audit which is 49,000 43,000 for the city's basic financial statements and 6,000 for the audit of the retirement system so he's combining all these entities at the same price and then the schools are on top of that yeah so it's it's, mm -hmm. it's our part of the budget and also the schools part of the budget yeah. any other questions on this in, in finance counselor the only other was just a general comment that I I, I too was gonna raise the question of, that we talk about every year the pros and cons versus sticking with continuity versus a fresh set of eyes and I, I appreciate the uh, kind of compromise that you've arrived at to go one year, but then with a much greater lead time, mm -hmm. allow for the possibility of bringing in possible competitors. Yeah, and we certainly, I mean, finance <coughs> let everybody know what you know how that process progresses, so that any council that wants to attend the meetings where we we talk mm -hmm. to potential auditors to make a recommendation, everyone would be welcome to come and attend. <coughs> and three years ago, as I recall, that was pretty well attended and. And, and well discussed by the council for those that were around. So uh, first to the amendment of that language uh, to put in reference to the engagement letter. Um, if there's no more discussion on that, we had a motion on that. All in favor of the amendment, please say aye. Aye. Aye in finance. And then to the entire uh, order as amended. Well, and, and that amendment also removes the second whereas clause. The second whereas, yes. yes. So it's just the first whereas and then the language uh, now therefore be ordered with the uh, engagement letter. So as amended, all in favor in finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Thank you. That's kind of overly confusing for recommending things staying the same as 18. Uh, our next order um, is 18.144, an order for intermunicipal agreements to provide a sealer of weights and measures services to the town of South Hadley in East Hampton. What did that whereas Mass General Law Section 40 
uh, subsection 4A allows for joint operation of public activities among governmental units and whereas Mass General Law Section 40 subsection 4A requires that such intergovernmental agreements be approved uh, in a city by the City Council and the Mayor and whereas the City of Northampton provides services to and shares services with other municipalities. Therefore, pursuant to Mass uh, General Law Section 40, Subsection 4A, the City Council hereby authorizes the City of Northampton to enter into agreements with the Town of South Hadley and the City of East Hampton to provide sealer of weights and measure services to these municipalities and assess each municipality per the agreements. Do we have a motion to finance? Make a motion. Second. A second. Okay. And uh, Susan can tell us what's up here because we, we already do that for some communities, right? Right. We already provide uh, services to Granby, Amherst, and Hadley. And uh, we've been approached by South Hadley and East Hampton. Um, you know, towns that are above a, below a certain population, the state will do the sealer of weights and measures. Um, but once you get to a certain size, you need to have your own sealer of weights and measures. And I believe the East Hampton one retired. Uh, I'm not sure what happened in South Hadley, but they've approached us. We're using the same pricing that we do. We make a, we come up with a price based on the number of devices that the sealer of weights and measures needs to go out and measure. And they measure every gas pump, every scale, every farm stand scale he goes out and, and you see his seal probably when you go to get gas, you see John Fry. He's done it for the city for quite some time. So we will be bringing in, between these two towns, about another $11,000 a year. For that service? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any questions on this in finance? No? Well, then, having no further questions, all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Um, the next is 18147. This is upon the recommendation of uh, the mayor. Order that the following budgetary transfers for the FY819, I'm sorry, budget hereby made. This is in the city clerk's office for election workers. And this is going to move $42,900 out of the OM portion of the budget and put that same $42,900 into the PS section of the budget. And uh, the next order, we'll, we'll talk about that. But because the, we took a position on the fact that we had to make sure that we were paying um, a certain wage to our city employees, they used to get stipends, now they have to get an hourly rate. So the money goes from OM to PS so that we can pay them. And then the next, the next um, order that's coming up is actually the rates that we'll be paying them at. So it, it's done to conform with our wishes about paying uh, a basic wage to our city employees. Uh, so again, it's 42,000 from OM to PS in the clerk's office for the elections. We have a motion to finance? So motion. Second. Second. Okay, any more discussion on this one? All in favor of a positive recommendation? Um, we got a question. Oh, we do. Council. Yeah, Susan, I want to thank you very much. Um, calling you today because I was very concerned of how we apparently did it before where we did use the OM money automatically. And you explaining it very thoroughly to me about why we are taking the OM and just strictly going PS because of what you had talked to me about. We, Thank we, you. We need to comply with the IRS and, the, and, and they are employees, so we can't, we shouldn't really be paying them on accounts payable. And as, as Council Murphy said, we want to make sure we're following through with the Council's ordinance that we're paying people at least the minimum wage. And so this but will accomplish that. What actually initiated this was because of what happened in uh, Chicopee? Well, um, it came to the attention of tre treasurers locally that IRS had audited Chicopee and had said that they were doing it wrong. They were paying their election workers on OM, um, on, on accounts payable, instead of treating them as employees. So we're correcting that. We're learning from their experience, and we're going to do this going forward. We'll be paying our election workers on on payroll. Thank you for the thorough job, Susan. Any further questions? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Right, and the next one goes along with that. It's 18148, in order to authorize compensation for city election workers. Whereas Mass General Law Section 54, subsection 22, provides that election officers shall receive compensation as the city council may determine, and whereas the Board of Registrars recognizes the need for flexible time schedules for workers and further recognizes that an hourly compensation structure will provide fair and equitable pay 
through all the precincts. Now, th therefore, it be ordered that the City Council authorizes the following rates for election officers. Wardens and deputy wardens will receive $20 an hour. Clerks, deputy clerks, and constables will receive $16 an hour. And inspectors will receive $11 an hour. Do we have a motion in finance? A motion. Second. Second. Uh, any questions on this? And this is where, it's where the 42,000 I think there's just a, a little Scrivener's error here. It says that the inspector will receive $11, and it doesn't say $11 an hour, so it looks like that would be the total. <laughs> so. Would you like to, well, do <coughs> you want to offer an amendment to this so that we can put in an hour? I think if it's a Scrivener's error. It, it probably <laughs> is, but we just. Susan. We might need some you want to go ahead and just amend it. We'll put our in there now. Okay. okay. Amend it. An amendment. You second that? Yes. Okay. Any questions on the amendment? Yes. Oh, no. Sorry. Go with the amendment. Go. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Then uh, be comfortable with the motion as amended by adding per hour to the $11 for the inspectors. Yes. All right. Any other discussion? Then all in favor of a positive recommendation of the order as amended? Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And I know of no new business. Second. Hi. Thank you. Um, back to the City Council. Is there any objection to moving an order up? I'm aware that there are a couple members of uh, the audience, at least, who are here for an order uh, about uh, renaming a street. And so, unless there's any objection, I'd, I'd like to move 18.145 up. Um, this is an order to. Name the vehicle entrance way to Northampton City Hall, Mayor Sean Dunphy Way. And as opposed to reading it myself, I could defer to our current mayor if he wishes to introduce it. Okay. Your Thank preference. You, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. um, Which one? Uh, reading glasses for this one. Okay. It's, uh, well, smaller I brought print. those. Yeah. Um, Yes, thank you very much. So this is an order I've introduced um, to name the vehicle entrance way to Northampton City Hall, Mayor Sean Dunphy Way. Ordered that whereas Sean Michael Dunphy, uh, 1941-2015, was elected the 38th mayor of the city of Northampton in 1969 and served three terms from 1970 to 1975, and whereas Mayor Dunphy was the youngest mayor in the city's history at age 28 and the first to envision and carry out the role of mayor as a full-time chief executive. And whereas Mayor Dunphy played an immeasurable role in modernizing and professionalizing Northampton city government, including the creation of its first planning department, adoption of its first comprehensive zoning ordinance, establishment of its first modern conservation commission, creation of its first muni municipal recycling center, creation of its first industrial park, a significant expansion of city recreation programs and major investments in infrastructure. And whereas Mayor Dunphy also played a key role in helping spark the revitalization of downtown Northampton through key investments in infrastructure and sidewalk amenities and helping attract retail businesses and housing development and was recognized posthumously for that role in 2017 by being added to the Ebert Traeger Memorial, quote, honoring the memory of those who had a significant impact on the vitality of downtown Northampton, unquote. And whereas Sean Dunphy's service to the city he loved transformed and advanced both the role of mayor and city government itself in improving the lives of its residents. And so now, therefore, be it ordered that the vehicle entranceway adjacent to Northampton City Hall at 210 Main Street, leading to the municipal parking lot there behind, is hereby designated as Mayor Sean Dunphy Way to honor the outstanding and visionary contributions of Sean Dunphy to his community and the municipal government he led as mayor of Northampton. Thank you. Uh, if I may, I'd like to make the motion to put this on the floor for approval. Um, is there a second? Second. Second. Um, any further discussion, either from our mayor or the city council? I just wanted to add that, um, you know, following, uh, well, Judge Dunphy, I mean, he was an accomplished <laughs> public servant as mayor and then went on to have second equally accomplished career um, as a judge um, uh, in the family and probate court rising actually to the chief justice role 
Um, so he sort of had these two incredible careers all focused on serving people in public service. So following his death, I had an, an opportunity to speak with his grandchildren, actually, um, as well as his uh, widow, Ann Dunphy, about um, what might be an appropriate way to memorialize him. And we talked about a number of different things. Um, and this just sort of <coughs> uh, seemed really fitting. We just redid the, the parking lot area and made some improvements. Um, and I had a chance to talk to Ann uh, several weeks ago, and she was uh, very tickled by the idea, and I know her family was as well. So, um, so the the goal would be again, it would not it's not a public way per <coughs> se, um, but we'd be mounting a, a large green sign that would uh, denote that, um, and uh, kind of has a kind of a double meaning as well, um, just because he kind of um, so sort of set the way for modern city government. Thank you. I, it's unusual, but um, are there any members of the audience who would like to speak to this? We'd be happy to recognize you if you wish. And if not, that would certainly be um, okay as well. Not to put anyone on the spot, but anyone would be welcome to do so. Um, is there a motion to recognize members of the public for this I purpose? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Extensions. My name is Marsha Burek, 115 Fairway Village in Leeds. Um, I was privileged to work on Sean's first campaign in 1969 and to see the growth and professionalism of city government and all that he did and all that he meant to so many people. And I thank you, Mayor Narkowitz, for recognizing that. And I think it's um, a long time that we've been wanting to do something, and this is a very fitting place that you've come up with to, to name the Sean Dunphy Way, which is the Sean Dunphy Way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other members of the public wish to speak on this? Um, I'll just say I, I think this is a, a wonderful idea. Obviously, Mayor Dunphy, well before my time, but whenever I talk to those I know in the city who serve as my kind of institutional memory, um, you know, the word that I hear is not just professionalism, but also integrity. Um, and I think the idea that we, we're going to have the Sean Dunphy way going by City Hall and to the City Council Chambers um, is a very fitting piece of symbolism because I think his work, from what I understand and have learned from others, really embodies what good government is. And it will be a reminder for all of us to um, make sure we adhere to the principles of good government in our work. Uh, so I'm also like to thank the mayor for bringing this forward. And I hope, it, hope we have a unanimous vote uh, in favor tonight in the council. Are there any other councillors who would wish, wish to speak to this? Councillor Bigwell. Just, just a question. Will, will, it, will there be some kind of public uh, event and dedication associated with this, Mr. Mayor? Um, um, there, uh, I'm not at liberty to discuss okay. that. Um, there there will be, um, but it, uh, we're trying to make it a surprise. So. Um, Sorry. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> we, are, we, are, we, are we, are, we are working on that, but, um, but the, the time <laughs> hasn't been set yet. So now, don't claim too much executive privilege because it hasn't passed yet. You know? What's that? So I don't exactly, claim exactly. It hasn't passed. Uh, Although I feel uh, good about uh, its chances. But the councilor was actually suggesting the, the question. So thank you. That's a good point. Uh, any other discussion? <laughs> okay. Well, I, I would ask for a, a roll call on this order, please. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. That order is approved unanimously, so thank you very much. Um, I'd like to return to regular order uh, and take up the financial orders that we have before us. Um, let's see, the first is 18.144, in order to enter into intermissional agreements to provide sealer of weights and measures services to South Hadley and East Hampton. Is there a motion to approve this? So move. I took one out of order, but we got this one, and we have a, we have a motion from Councilor Murphy. Is there a second? I second it. Second. Any discussion on this one? Um, or Councilor Nash? This is the, the Scanlon and Associates? No, I skipped that. No, okay. Skip. All right. By accident, and so now we're on weights and measures, and we'll go got immediately it. back to the audit after okay. that. So someone should audit my parliamentary uh, acumen. And if no other discussion, I'd ask for a roll call. Councilor Murphy? Yes. <coughs> 
Yes. Councillor Donald. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. And Councillor LaBarge. Yes. <clears throat> Suspend the rule. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, Councillor Barge makes a motion to suspend Second. the rules. Second. Any discussion on suspension of rules? All those in favor of doing so, please say aye. Aye. Any, aye. Opposed, any abstention of rules suspend? Is there a motion on second reading? Second. Uh, is there a second? To second. It? Okay. Any discussion on second reading for this order? If not, another roll call, please. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor Donald? Yes. Councillor Bidwell? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. 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 So that is approved unanimously in second reading. Uh, now we'll go to the fun one. This is um, 18.141 in order to award contract for fiscal year 19 audit to Scanlon Associates at first reading as amended by the Committee on Finance. Is there a motion to approve this order? Move to approve. Second. Seconded second. by Councillor Nash. Any discussion? Councillor Nash. I'd just like to thank finance for their due diligence on, you know, the way they figured this thing out. We, uh, I think it's a great solution, so thank you. Any other discussion? Uh, if not, I would ask for a roll call and approval. <coughs> Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. We have until so we'll have we'll come back to it again in our first meeting in September. Uh, the next is 18.147 in order to transfer money from City Clerk OM to City Clerk PS for election workers. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion on this order? Roll call, please. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. 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 Suspend the rule. Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any, aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? <coughs> rules suspended. Motion on second reading. Is there a second? Second. Okay. So made by Councillor Klein, second by Councillor Barge. Any discussion? Uh, roll call again. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor LaBarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councilor yes. 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 Okay. It's proven unanimously again. Now we're on to O-18148 in order to authorize compensation for city election workers. Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the order? Uh, roll call, please. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor LaBarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. And Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Suspend rule. Any is there a second suspension of rules? <laughs> second. Okay. Any discussion suspension of rules? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those any abstentions? Rule suspended. Move second reading. Anybody? Move yes. second reading. Second. Okay. Made and seconded. Any discussion on second reading? And whenever we're ready, we'll have a roll call. All right. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor LaBarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Donald. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Yes. Approved unanimously. Or, uh, financial orders in second reading 18134 in order to authorize funding for the Rocky Hill Greenway multi use trails. Motion to approve this order? Move to approve. For a second. Second. And seconded. Any discussion? If not, we'll proceed to a roll call. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Donald. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Councillor Carney. Yes. And Councillor Klein. Yes. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. That is six votes. So. It's okay. So we're okay. Um, <coughs> that is approved then. Um, good. So that takes your financial orders. Uh, now I move to 18142. This is an order to strengthen democratic representation in the Northampton Housing Authority. <clears throat> um, I'll read it for the record. Uh, as upon the rec recommendation of me, it's ordered the mayor's authorized and requested the to seek state legislation as follows. Something to the effect of an act 
expanding the membership of the Housing Authority in the City of Northampton, be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives in the General Court assembled as follows. <laughs> Section 1. Notwithstanding any general or special law, the contrary members of the Housing Authority of Northampton shall include, in addition to the five members provided by Chapter 121B, Section 5, six additional members, each of whom shall be a tenant in a building owned and operated by or on behalf of the Housing Authority. These six members shall be chosen in an election among all tenants of the building owned and operated by or on behalf of the Housing Authority for a term of two years. Such elections shall be held in accordance with regulations promulgated by the Housing Authority and or the Department. In the case of a vacancy, the Mayor shall appoint a tenant member subject to City Council approval to fill the remainder of the unexpired term. Six members shall constitute a quorum. Section to this Act shall uh, take effect upon its passage. So is there a motion to approve this order for the sake of discussion? Move to approve. Is there a second? Okay, made by Councilor Klein, second by Councilor Nash. Um, I'll say at the outset, I think the appropriate way to dispose of this tonight is to refer it to at least one committee uh, be, uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I think it's a complex proposal. And second, I think that uh, we want to set up a process whereby we have substantial public comment and discussion, in particular discussion from residents of the Northampton Housing Authority. So rather than just send it on its way tonight, I, I would like to discuss a, some place to put it. Um, to refer to legislative matters and um, community, community resources. Res I was thinking resources. resources. Yeah, community yeah. resources. It's not a city yeah. entity. Yeah. Right. Um, so the motion is made. Is it seconded? Seconded, yeah. Okay. So discussion on the referral. Okay. Um, so Councilor Nash and Councilor Bidwell. Yeah, I just want to say thank you for putting this together. I know, re you know, over uh, the, the last month or so, there's been, you know, a lot of uh, discussion about the way um, uh, tenant concerns have been addressed and, um, and that out of the angst that was created by the air conditioner discussion, this idea uh, came out. A, a number of people uh, approached me about the idea of uh, tenants having a greater voice on on the board and and also with a more democratic process of figuring this all out I'm not sure that this is it but this is I, I, I appreciate that it's on the table and that we can start uh, just you know entertaining how how to better do this so um, so thank you okay. council from Ward 2 then then Ward 6 uh, <coughs> yes I too think it's appropriate that it be referred get Full, full discussion, uh, and yes, as a member of community resources and city services, I think community resources is probably yes. the appropriate place. Thank you. Great, council. I didn't catch city service. Did you say? I w the the motion on the floor is to refer to community resources, and I'm saying I think that's probably appropriate. Okay. And and legislative matters. And legislative Thank matters. You. Also, my question is. Um, the Northampton Housing Commission, where did they become part of this? Because I think that they also should be able to come and work out with what is occurring here since we do have a commission. <coughs> there is a housing commission. So I think that they should be working also with any kind of changes. And also I think that their voice is very important on how you want to move on this. I, I agree, and um, the current members of the Northampton Housing Authority Board are encouraged to um, collaborate with the council in the development of this proposal. Um, so this is a referral, so I don't want to speak too much to the merits of it, but we kind of jumped the gun and went right to the referral just to provide a, a brief description for the purposes of considering the referral. I'll, I'll just tell you, um, you know, in, in my opinion, um, you know, the, the idea was precipitated because of the air conditioning issue, but um, I think there are a number of issues that um, those of us been on the council for even a little while um, are <coughs> familiar with. There's, there's a lot of very difficult issues in the Northampton Housing Authority. It's not just air conditioning. Um, the difficulty is, quite frankly, a lot of them blur the line between just general city issues and sort of 
if, I know if you want to call them landlord-tenant issues. You know, I've, I've spoken to a woman who has had a broken stove, you know, in her apartment for far longer than she should have. You know, people who report, you know, that, I don't know, their room was fumigated without notice, and uh, there's been things that are broken and requests go unanswered and, and so on. And I think what you're looking at is an agency that is not funded properly. Um, and so part of it is funding, but I also think there's a question of management and administration. And, you know, the difficulty is these, these, this institution is, is kind of like an island, you know, because the, and that's in every community, the local communities agree to create them, but they're created as a matter of state law, and then they're kind of just out there on their own. And my fear is that they're sort of, they're neither, they're in neither, they're in neither side of the line, you know. Um, they don't really have the democratic representation they should have to address the immediate things that affect them in their lives. Um, I think that we have good people on the, on the Northampton Housing Authority Board. I just want to make sure that's clear. Mm -hmm. um, but I think as a practical matter, the Northampton Housing Authority Board should be a little more assertive in terms of the policy making and oversight role that it should play. And so it's m my theory, and that I put forward, and maybe not everyone agrees, and we'll see as we discuss this, is that if you, we have more tenants on the, join them on the board, who actually have a stake in these policies, then, then perhaps those policy making <coughs> oversight powers will only be strengthened. And the example I've given is, you know, say you live in a condo, and your condo association is responsible for making rules about everything from can you have pets to can you smoke to what, what happens if the roof has a hole in it? Um, is how would you feel if everyone on the condo association board were either appointed by someone else or there were all people who didn't live there? You know. Slur point of order. I think yeah. we're voting here on referral to uh, committees, and I feel like we're going into the territory. So you don't want me to explain it? Talking about the merits. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, you, your point of order is sustained because you're right. But <laughs> I, as I as I did point out, I did the refer motion to a referral was put on the floor before I could even explain what we were referring. But. Are you saying you want me to stop well, describing it? Well, <laughs> we could, in fact, <laughs> so do it we could else. vote on the referral, and then we can have you continue. But I think that it, it's just we're not doing this properly if we're hearing from you well, while we've got on the floor the referral. Okay. Well, then my the discretion that I was seeking, I guess, has been curtailed. Your <laughs> point of order is, is sustained because you are correct. So I will, if you wish, stop describing the proposal. So. Um, Okay. Um, just to any clarify, other I'd like to hear what you have to say about this, but okay. I think we should do it after we vote on the referral. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I've, I've said my piece, so. Um, if, is there any more discussion to the question of the referral? Um, all those in favor of the referral, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Matters referred. Okay. So we now go on to an order authorizing the city of Northampton to acquire a historic preservation restriction on the Hampshire County Courthouse. Is there a motion in this order? Make a motion. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second by Councilor Carney. Any discussion on the order? Where did this come from? You're asking where it came from? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Preservation Upon the oh, there it is. Is your, is your inquiry finished? Do you want, okay. So yeah, it comes from the, it. okay. Yeah. So this is um, upon the recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee and the Historical Commission. It's 18.150, in order authorizing the city of Northampton to acquire a historic preservation restriction on the Hampshire County Courthouse. Order that whereas City Council previously approved Community Preservation Act CPA funding to assist in the historic rehabilitation of the historic Hampshire County Courthouse, owned by the Hampshire Council of Governments on the corner of Main and King Street. And whereas the condition of the CPA funding is that the Hampshire Council of Governments grant the city a permanent historic preservation restriction on the courthouse. And whereas preservation of the courthouse, which is listed 
in the state and national registers of historic places is important to the public and for the, enjoy for the enjoyment and appreciation of its architectural, ar uh, archaeological, and historical heritage. Now, therefore, be ordered that the City Council of Northampton is authorized to acquire for historic preservation purposes a historic preservation restriction as defined in Master General Law Chapter 184, Section 31 of the General Laws on the above described premises and that the City Council hereby approve such historic preservation restrictions. Is there a motion to approve this order? Motion. Second. Second. Good. So, discussion. Any other discussion? This is, we, we did this and now we're, we're taking the historic preservation restriction. Correct, yes, you gave, uh, you gave funding, CPA funding, and, and now we're going back to, to make sure we have that preservation restriction. Yes, I did have a, just a quick question for the mayor. When the city holds a, a preservation restriction of this sort, how does the monitoring and enforcement Generally, it's the historic, uh, you know, the historical commission. Um, yeah, referral, the yeah. Staff person would be the historic yeah. planner, which in this case is Sarah LaValle. So, you know, they would be monitoring. I mean, I don't think we're going to have a problem with first church with, with this particular with the courthouse because it's on the it's also already on the historic register. And um, but it, that's typically um, who the monitoring uh, person is to make sure. And in this case, it's owned by, you know, um, right now the county government control or the former county government controls it. It would revert to the Commonwealth, um, but, you know, we would, we would monitor it. Um, luckily, we can see it from out our city hall window, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's close by. So I think that's, so that's typically what happens with these. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, we have a roll call vote on this then. Yes. 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 Thank you. There are two ordinances that have yet to be referred. They are 18.146, an ordinance to amend Chapter 153 of cemeteries, and, and 18.152, an ordinance to amend Chapter 9 of the Code of Ordinances. Uh, so they would go to legislative matters, certainly. Yes. They're not zoning, so they don't have to be referred to the planning board. So, is there a motion to, um, is there interest in me reading them aloud? We'll move them as a group and wave reading. Okay. Is there a second to that? Second. Any discussion of moving them, uh, sending them both referral. to legis yeah. legislative matters? Yep. Yes. Okay. All those in favor of the referral, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? They refer it. Um, we have one final ordinance, which is um, at the end. This is uh, an ordinance relative to parking on Pleasant Street, 18.111. Is there a motion to approve this? Approval. Approval. Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion on this? Roll call. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Yes. Any new business? Motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Yeah. Uh, extensions, thank you. Thank you very much.